Creator Clash, an event that was mired in controversy from its inception. From insulted wives to alleged theft in the hundreds of thousands, Creator Clash quickly went from a night filled with fun to a cautionary tale similar to Tanacon, showing that just because you think you have a good idea, that doesn't mean you actually do. Honestly, it's pretty crazy that Logan Paul, of all people, was one of the few content creators to pull off a successful boxing event. At first, it seemed like iDubs would be one of those few, right up until it all fell apart. Today, I want to take you on a journey and show how we got from here... Um, Alpha Lion Ian is here. ...to here. $250,000 in the red. What we do here is go back, 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 back. To tell this story, we have to start where any story would, at the beginning, or at least where people say it all began. iDubbbz decided a few years ago that he wanted to pivot away from the content cop format and take a more narrative-focused approach in his next projects, making videos like Full Force, where he documented the life of Airsoft Fatty, a Star Wars YouTuber who played with lightsabers in his backyard, or Ice Cream Man, which features Dax Flame, who now hosts a show run by iDubbbz. After doing these videos for a while, Ian decided that he was going to switch it up and try something different, heading up to Rhode Island to do a doc on Sam Hyde. The whole story with Sam could be a video in and of itself, but, but today my focus is on a point that seemed pretty inconsequential at the time. Idubs and Sam box under a tree while Sam mocks him. Now some have said that this is the moment that made Ian want to set up a boxing match, and while there isn't any evidence directly supporting that, the dates somewhat line up to make it a possibility. Ian came to Sam in March of 2021, then posted a video in October of the same year trying to get Ricegum to fight him, eventually setting up a huge event to raise money for charity and show his boxing prowess. Personally, I'm not convinced just from the dates, but I do get why people think Sam influenced the situation, especially given the animosity between the two later. What we do here is go back, 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 back. The first creator clash went off without a hitch and was a great success. Tons of money was made for charity, pretty much every fight was entertaining, and people were hyped for the next one. My three favorite fights were Just a Minx, Harley from Epic Mealtime, and iDubbbz. The Just a Minx fight was really fun to watch, mainly because neither her or her opponent used any type of defense, and Harley was really impressive, seeming to be the second most technically sound fighter there, only behind Michael Reeves. When it comes to iDubbbz versus Dr. Mike, I love the heart Ian showed going up a fighter who had a decade of training on him, and he still somewhat held his own. While this was going on, Sam Hyde had gotten turned away at the door despite paying well over $10,000 for ringside seats. They refused to show any training footage with him in it. The security for the venue had been given pictures of his face, and camera crews were apparently told to avoid anyone wearing his merch. Allegedly, there were a few creators who threatened to walk if Sam was involved in any way, but regardless of the reason, Ian had clearly made sure to avoid any relation between Sam Hyde and this event, but he would soon find that to be completely impossible. What we do here is go back, 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 back. After the success of Creator Clash, Ian was riding high, and soon put out a list of who would be fighting in Creator Clash 2, with names like Marisha Ray, former host of Superpower Beatdown, Abelina Sabrina, and the star of the segment, Froggy Fresh. Froggy Fresh was a skit YouTuber, but he had been pretty much inactive on YouTube for the past six years, so there was a ton of hype for his return. Despite all this hype, Froggy made one fatal mistake. He was a fan of Sam Hyde. Horrible, I know. What made it worse is the fact that he went to go train with him, and because iDubbbz doesn't like Sam, drama ensued. Ian reached out to Froggy, letting him know that he wasn't happy with it. The conversation pretty much goes nowhere, leading Ian to drop Froggy from the card. This was a bit overboard for me. I get why Ian doesn't like Sam, but it seems like Froggy was right when he said that Ian's personal problems are affecting his business. $350,000 was offered to put Froggy back on the card, but Ian refused. Froggy really didn't help his case by going into a Twitter space dissing Ian, then doing interviews and dissing Ian, then putting out tweets dissing Ian. Honestly, the situation just shows us how important objectivity and communication is. Both of these guys could have benefited greatly if they were frank and realistic with each other. Froggy should have known that he was playing with fire by working with Sam. Ian could have thought ahead on how this would affect the event and might have avoided the biggest story around it being him letting his emotions guide him, but he saw Sam Hyde and couldn't think straight. Eventually, people stopped worrying about Froggy's placement and began to discuss what would happen to his opponent, Chris Raygun. Keep in mind that this whole drama went down less than a month away from the event, 
So now Chris, who spent the better part of a year training for a particular opponent, now had to switch his focus to a man 6 inches taller and 15 pounds heavier. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Chris ended up losing badly to no one's surprise. There was no chance he would pull it off, but I held out hope. If he hit his opponent as hard as he hit the ref a few hundred times, he might have pulled a win off. When it comes to the fights outside of Chris Raygun, I really did not even pretend to care. Outside of Jarvis Johnson and the other two I mentioned earlier, I really don't know a lot of these people and none of them made me think they were going to have an amazing showing. Harley was one of the main attractions and he got thrown out of the ring Rocky 3 style. Well, it wasn't that bad, but having one of your most skilled guys get rolled out of the ring like a bowling ball doesn't bode well for the future of your event. But even with taking all of that into account, the fights I did see were alright and it felt a lot more fun for the creators. After the event was over, iDubbbz decided it was time for a response. Entitled Addressing the Froggy Fresh Drama, Ian goes into his justification for the banning of Froggy, using the Twitter space mentioned earlier to back up his point. This is when the iDubbbz discourse reached a fever pitch not seen since the Anissa OnlyFans announcement. No one who was against Ian was swayed over to his side and anyone already on his side cheered him on. Unfortunately for Ian, the people against him ended up outweighing his supporters, and the video currently sits at 84,000 dislikes to 75,000 likes. The video itself is pretty odd, with Ian using things Froggy said after his ban to justify banning him. The video could have been 6 minutes long and the same amount of info would have been communicated. Instead, the video is 26 minutes long, with the last 16 being devoted to Sam Hyde and Froggy Fresh Armenis. For someone who has shown himself to be really good at presenting arguments, this whole thing felt really out of character. Again, the personal issues are taking over. Ian and Anissa have both said that the better iDubbbz videos were written by her, so maybe he should have consulted with her before he put this one out. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I thought Ian's video was going to be the end of the drama surrounding the creator clash, but I was really wrong. On July 3rd of 2023, iDubbbz dropped a video called The Harsh Reality of Creator Clash 2, in which he talks about how the event lost $250,000. To put things into perspective for any younger viewers who have had the fortune of not having to worry about money, according to the US Census, the average household income is around $70,000 a year, meaning that they lost three and a half years of an average American salary in one night. They really seemed to think that all the talk of people boycotting was just that, and that they would pony up for the pay-per-view when the time came. They sold half the pay-per-view they did last year, which is partly due, at least in my eyes, to the fact that they had so little name recognition. Remember how I said I only knew about four of the people fighting despite there being well over 20? Well, that seems to be a theme even amongst his fans, with multiple people in his comments saying that they didn't know who a lot of these people even were. Keep in mind that I'm not trying to clown them at all, because these guys are way more clouded up than me, but at some point we have to acknowledge that this is a problem a lot of people have. As an entertainer, your job is to make people want to see what you have to offer, and the roster that got put out just didn't do that. Now some of the budget could have gone to marketing, but instead Ian rented out an entire hotel so the fighters could work through their trauma. Uh, I am here at uh, the Creator Clash 2 uh, Gala red carpet after party uh we lost two hundred fifty thousand dollars on the event honestly it really sucks that the charity people gave their money for didn't get anything but at least the fighters got to have a fun little get together after the fight right the crazy thing about this big budget is the fact that they had no anti-piracy measures and about 800,000 people got to see the fights for free showing that most of the people who were even interested in the event didn't care enough to pay Ian managed to obliterate the image of the Creator Clash in less than 15 minutes. I went in respecting the fact that Ian pushed through controversy to help those in need, and I left the video asking what the point even was. Ian talked about people claiming that they were pocketing the money, and I don't think that's likely. There were way too many moving parts for two people, one of which training for a boxing match to be able to cook the books effectively enough to get away with that level of embezzlement. They would have to be in charge of the pay-per-view fund, paying everyone, filing taxes, all without slipping up once. I just can't see them pulling it off. Ian also announced that he would put up the full broadcast of the event with a fundraiser, and I doubt that'll do much good, but I can appreciate the effort. 
Ian rounds off the video by saying that someone's attempting to take over Creator Clash and that he doesn't know if he'll have to make a video about it. Ian rounds off the video by saying that someone is attempting to take over Creator Clash, and while he says he doesn't know if he'll make a video, I'm sure he will. In the meantime, I'd like to encourage you to volunteer at your local food bank. You get to give the people in need exactly what they need, and you won't lose a quarter of a million dollars in the process. I'm really curious how Creator Clash 3 will be handled, if it happens at all. I'm of two minds when it comes to that. On the one hand, if you fall off a horse, you gotta get up back in the saddle and soldier on. On the other hand, Creator Clash is a seemingly dying brand. I don't really see it going anywhere but down. Personally, I feel as though the most likely outcome is Ian laying the groundwork for Creator Clash 3, only to quietly cancel the event due to lack of interest and move on. At the end of the day, it seems like the legacy of Creator Clash is a cool idea that buckled under its own weight. Not every cool concept you come up with needs to come to life. At least Tanacon made money. <laughs>